So the reading today, uh, well, this reading um, by Sastak, Other Otherness, is um, the point of having it in this course is to establish a framework, okay, of how to view um, our course on US history from a Chicano perspective, you know? So when we, in this kind of classes, what we do is look at look at history from from a, a different point of view. We've learned history from basically from the European perspective and how the Europeans came to these uh, lands to the U.S. to what is today the U.S. and then move on and brought civilization and so on, so on. You know as if nothing else was here, no other histories happened, you know? So this is the point of having these kinds of classes, the ethnic studies classes. And that's what Hernandez does in her reading, makes the point for that, is that we are not just bystanders in the history that happens and we're not part of it. Um, so among the characters, categories that Sastak talks about um, is the one of them, the, the most important is the one that is said is called otherness, no? So what is otherness? Otherness is a discursive process by which a group, a group that is the self, constructs, and by when I say constructs, I'm talking about narrates, invents, reinvents, an other group. Uh huh. So put it in simple words is when there's a format so that I can see the other stuff that's happening. Um, it's in simple words, the self is differentiating itself from another, no? <clears throat> so this is just a, in normal, like in, there's different ways in which we can see this. Identity for anyone, no, not just Europeans. Identity is this process of establishing ourselves as a self versus this other, the rest of the world, no? So in individual terms, it starts with the, the first moment in which a person understands itself as a different, as a separate, as an identity. It can be, for example, when the baby uh, when a mother and a baby are together and the baby looks at himself in his mother's eyes and sees a reflection. And then at that moment understands that he's different from that other being, you know, the mom. So that's the first moment of identity, you no? Know? Um, but in terms of, in social terms, not in psychological terms, what uh, we're talking about here is a groups that identify themselves as selves versus whoever is not themselves, no? So a society, a community, everyone, every community, every society, every culture does that process, no? Of creating the self versus the other, no? So what is the other is the negation of identity, and meaning that's with, that which I am not, who I am not, you no? Know? And the self is my identity, who I am, you no? Know? But an othering, which is another of the concepts that he works on, is the, the stigmatizing of the difference, you no? Know? Meaning you are this other that you see, you narrate that other or construct that other as something that is lesser than you as the self, you know? Then you are establishing a hier hierarchy. So the self is better than the other, you know? And that, that's what stigmatizing is, you know? Um, so socially we see that um, in terms of individual, you, you know, you can establish the distinction between yourself and your other without making these um, hierarchies, you no? Know? But socially, that, that happens a lot. You know, there's groups that think of themselves as better than the others, superior. 
much clearer when you think about race relations or, you know, um, in colonial situations, uh, which I'm going to address. <clears throat> so, the self and other. Um, otherness is, and this is a quote from Stasak, otherness is you less to the difference of the other than to the point of view and the discourse of the person who perceives the other as such. So this might sound like a, you know, very convoluted way of saying things. Um, but if we take it just uh, piece by piece, this sentence, other is you less to the difference. And when we talk about the difference is this distinction between I'm a, I am myself and then there's another, you know. So we are different. Mm -hmm. So it's, the otherness is less about this difference between the self and the other than to the point of view of the person, of the self, you know, that perceives this other as, as another, you know. Um, the opposition us and the self versus them and the other allows humanity to be divided into two groups. And this is when we're talking about this establishing otherness as a lesser, you know? So in these distinctions, you one embodies, one of these groups embodies the norm and whose identity is valued as a positive. And then on another that is def defined by its faults, by its lacks, the value and susceptible to discrimination. Okay. So this is, as you can see, he's taking us to understanding these oppositions of other, not as, not as an individual issue, but as a, as a historical issue. Mm -hmm. So from the Western perspective, all society, um, before that, we can say all societies create a self and another with their own categories, you know? However, Western thought, um, the way it, it creates it uh, because of the history, it's different, you know? The Western thought is based on a binary thought, which is rooted in Aristotle thinking. And what do we mean when we say binary thought? It's thinking in dichotomies, meaning in dualities, you know? For example, male, female, public, private, man versus animal, nature, nurture, which means culture, civilized, savage, white, black, colonizer, colonized. And, and when we think like this, which is uh, the Western way of thinking, which is our way of thinking because we are immersed in this culture, that's why we have, um, there's such a hard, a difficult way of um, constructing and, un and breaking, for example, in terms of gender, this opposition and thinking that there's third or more genders, no? non-binary thinking, okay? So the West and others more in terms of history. Colonization allowed the West to expand and export a civilizational project that presented itself as one of universal progress. Mm -hmm. So in this sense, the West is presenting itself as a self mm -hmm, that has the one truth, you know, the one way of being. This civilizational project is a worldview a set of values, practices, forms of reasoning, um, categories, exclusions, establish, establishment, sorry, of levels of advancement. European values are presented as the universal ones, as the standard to reach or to measure everything against, okay? So when we think about going back to this other othering, you no. Know, narrating the other as lesser than the self, this is what he's talking about. The, the other is not um, like the West. It doesn't have the values of the West. It hasn't acquired this uh, level of civilization, no? So 
colonialism as a when um, European expansion. No? It, is, what is colonialism first? It's the practice of domination, which involves the subjugation of one people to another. And Western colonialism begins in the um, end of the 15th century, but mainly the 16th century, with the onset of early explorations and mercantilism, which is the search for trade routes to expand exchange of goods and expand um, Western civilization. With the West came religion, science, notions of self-other, where the self is seen as the civilized and the other is the savage. And this savage needs to be eliminated, civilized, cared for as a child, used, exploited. You know? So here again, we can see this understanding of the self, which is the European, and the other, which is whatever is non European. You know? So here, um, this otherness is this process of differentiating self from the other you know? and it happens through this historical process of colonization excuse me um, so western colonialism in it's a political economic phenomenon where various european nations explored conquered settled and exploited large areas of the world um, the age of modern colonialism began about 1500s. So we know Col uh, Columbus uh, arrived in the Americas in 1492. And um, after him, the rest of the explorers, well, there were explorers before him that went to this area. Columbus was the first one to come this way. You know? um, so, the European discoveries of a sea route uh, around Africa, around the Africa's southern coast here. So this was mainly the Portuguese cities. And then to America, it was uh, Columbus. No? With this, and um, by America, I mean the Americas, the whole continent. With this event, um, sea power shifted from the Mediterranean area, from here, to the Atlantic. No? and the emerging nation states of Portugal, Spain, and then the Dutch, later France, and then later England. Mm -hmm. So you can see here this colonial expansion. Of course, it was very strong in this region of the world. It was um, the Columbus, as we know, Columbus' uh, goal was to reach this part of the world instead of because they used to do it by land you no know? and then this and the ottoman empire mediated all the exchanges so the europeans wanted to have a route that excluded this mediation mm -hmm. so that's why they did these uh, explorations no? so they were doing it through here which was a long route so columbus wanted to get here faster through this way he didn't know this land existed no um, anyway, so that's what, that was the reasoning for the exploration and that created this um, later Western colonialism. No? So colonization is, um, allowed the West to export its values and have them acknowledged almost everywhere through more or less efficient process of cultural integration. What this means is, through colonialism, through this colonization endeavor, Europe established itself as the, um, the, um, the way to be, you know, as, um, as the norm, you know, and established relations of oppression with everyone else, you no, know, of inequality. So the European self constructs itself as the superior, and superior to the non-European others, you no? Know? And that's why we're looking at this opposition of self and other in this class, because 
history as we as we we have learned history as this progress of european civilization that comes and is here and then moves on and we become this western self you know but what happened to the native americans here or what happened to <clears throat> all the indigenous people in the in mexico for example you no know? well they were either eliminated or they became um slave they were enslaved you no know? and they were oppressed basically you no know? so they were seen as lesser than what lesser than the european self so they are created as this other and they are otherized and this is the one category that we really need to um keep in our minds because today we continue to have this othering process you know this stigmatizing of the difference narrating the other as lesser than the self okay um otherness othering and its implications the creation of other and this is um all of stasak you know, the creation of otherness also called othering consists of applying a principle that allows individuals to be classified in two hierarchical groups them and us the out group meaning the them is only coherent as a group as a result of its opposition to the in group meaning the self and it's supposed lack of identity and this lack in meaning is they are not part of the self or part of the in group no this lack is based upon stereotypes that are largely stigmatizing and obviously simplistic no um and we see happen this happens you know here with this happens today so we can see it for example in the way um the big mexican is narrating narrated today in the current political um, um climate no uh, be, being narrated as lesser no lesser than the american society even though being mexican is part of being this american society no? the in-group constructs and that's just one example the in-group constructs one or more others setting itself apart and giving itself an identity as superior no other nurse and identity are two inseparable sides of the same coin the other only exists relative to the self and the self only exists relative to this other the asymmetry in power relationship and this is key is central to the construction of the otherness only the dominant group is in a position to impose the value of its particularity its identity and the value the particularity of the other others and their identity you no know? and at the same time imposes discriminatory measures so what sastag does in this article is uh, explains this process how it happens no and maybe he explains it in a very complicated way but he's just explaining how um in a way racism happens um exclusions happen classism mm -hmm. and any um, um regime of oppression you know? Patriar patriarchy too you no know? so how can we escape this otherizing trap so he says dominated out groups are others precisely because they are subject to the categories and practices of the dominant in group and because they're unable to prescribe their own rules you no know? why can't they because they are oppressed our group cease to be others when they manage to escape the oppression forced upon them by in groups in other words when they succeed in conferring upon themselves a positive autonomous identity an example he gives us is black is beautiful you no know? and in calling for discursive leg legitimacy and a policy to establish norms 
eventually constructing and evaluating their their own out groups no so ways there are ways of escaping this otherizing trapping which you don't have to be to accept this um identity that is given by you by the self you know by the dominant society you you can give your own identity or resignify the identity that is given to you and give it a positive value you know? like black is beautiful you know? so we can some considerations that i want to leave out think of examples of otherizing throughout history and today think of examples of resignification of identities turning an otherized identity into a self-identity meaning a positive identity how can narratives of oppression be changed to end with stigmas and what is the role played by exoticism in othering and otherizing? I didn't talk about this. He does talk about it in the reading, you know. Um, so I'm going to stop this part of this shit. Well done. So if we go back to our uh, model, there's we have a classroom classwork for this uh, reading. Mm -hmm. So. What you're gonna do for this part is you can use this um, presentation, your notes from this presentation and your notes from the reading, and you're gonna talk about, according to Stasak, how does the opposition so far the present itself throughout history? What is otherness? What does otherizing mean? And then what is exot exotism, exoticism, and provide some examples. I didn't talk about those here, there in the reading. Apply the concept of otherizing to current situations. Identify current examples of the opposition self other. And so that's you thinking about it. And how are these different categories present present in your life or in your experiences? Okay. So this is what you need to do with this um, as part of your classwork. And then you are also doing a reading report that includes both um, Hernandez and Stasak. Okay. So, does anybody have questions, comments about this? I know it's it's hard, it's difficult, uh, but I hope the presentation helps with the reading. Mm -hmm. So, any questions, comments? No. Okay, so if there are no questions, no comments, if you have them and just want to send them to me, you can do that. Um, and um, then I'll, I'll end the session here. I'll upload this presentation. I didn't upload yesterday. It, it, I didn't want to, but this one I, I will. Um, uh, and that's it. If you have any comments before I end, please let me know. No? Okay, so this is it. Thank you for being here and keep keep up with your work. <laughs>